silversmithing for me goes back to London, England, where we were born, born and bred. A British boy, otherwise known as a Londoner. As the song goes, maybe it's because I'm a Londoner that I love London town. Simon table, mazel table, mazel table, simon table. Moshe Picard is Pittsburgh's only singing silversmith, and he might even be Pittsburgh's only silversmith. In his little shop on Murray Avenue in Squirrel Hill, he's keeping an age-old craft alive. Well, there's two kinds of silversmithing. One is the silversmith that's pretty much involved in repair and restoration. And then there's the silversmith that actually, besides that, creates. Since I've opened up here in Squirrel Hill, I've been, I could say, almost bombarded with, with items for repair. But my true love is really in creating pieces. And I've created some magnificent pieces over the years. That may sound like bravado, but Moshe is one of the most modest people you could ever meet. But he's proud of his craft. I am a master silversmith, or so they tell me. People flock from all the suburbs. I even have customers from around the world that send me pieces for specific uh, restoration and repair. I believe it was soldered. I've had this since 1982. Really? So Moshe learned silversmithing from his father. From a little child, um, he used to have me sit on his lap and constantly I would watch him uh, exactly what he's doing and kind of learn the tricks of the trade. He would put me by the bench and give me a piece of metal. And he would say, Moshe, if you can cut a straight line from here to here, I'll give you uh, some pennies. In those days, pennies, you could do a lot with pennies. So, uh, so that's what I would do. Moshe may not look like the typical Pittsburgher. He's a member of the Lubavitch Jewish community, a group of observant Jews that has a sizable presence in Squirrel Hill. He moved his family here from Brooklyn more than a dozen years ago. Uh, we moved because we were looking for a quieter location, just something a little bit more laid back. Being that I come from London, you know, things are just a little bit uh, slower, slower pace over there. Moshe gets to combine his religion and his craft. Silver is an important metal in Jewish tradition. Use of it dates back to King Solomon's temple nearly 3,000 years ago. The first and second temples were made with gold, silver, precious metals. So it's been in our tradition uh, throughout the years to have um, beautiful pieces of silver um, for the traditions that we follow. Friday night when we come home from the uh, synagogue, we make a traditional blessing on the Kiddush, uh, with the Kiddush cup, as we said, the, you know, the silver goblet, and we beautify the home as much as we can with all these beautiful silver artifacts. In fact, most Jewish homes have many items of silver, candlesticks, goblets, breadboards, and other less common items. So here is a besamim, which is a, uh, a spice box. And uh, after the Shabbat is over, the Shabbat comes in Friday before sundown, and uh, is over Saturday evening after sundown. We come home from the synagogue, and we make a special blessing. Um, and one of the blessings we make is on a spice. The idea behind it is to, we smell something sweet so that the week ahead should be a sweet one. This is the uh, challah knife. Everybody knows that challah is bread. But um, on a Friday night, when we come home after the prayer, and we've made the, the traditional uh, blessing on the wine, and then it's time to move onto the challah, onto the bread. Well, the challah represents the manna that fell when the Jews left Egypt. Moshe creates and sells many items found in the Jewish home. Look to the left on the doorpost of most Jewish homes when you enter, and you might see a small, thin object. So these are mezuzahs. Most families have a mezuzah, actually, on every doorpost in the house, and uh, inside goes a scroll, a special scroll, which has the uh, Shema on it, uh, a special prayer, and uh, it protects the home. It cannot be machine-made. It cannot be printed. It's handwritten, and it says here, and it says, Shein Dalad Yud, which means God, the home of the... Jewish people. So here's something that I made myself. 
from A to Z. This is called an estrog box. An estrog is the citron fruit. Many Jewish people purchase these fruits during the holiday of Sukkot, traditionally a festival tied to harvest time. Special prayers are said over the fruit and a palm frond. Now if you look at the, uh, at the box, I'll start on this side here. Over here we have what's, what looks like a doorway, um, a doorway into a synagogue. And uh, over here you have a beautiful inlaid Jerusalem. Um, this is all hand, handmade. So this beautiful sterling silver um, asterisk box took about two months to make from scratch. Silversmithing needs a lot of patience. You gotta have a lot of patience and you gotta be able to sit. And when I first started doing this as a young boy under the, my father's training, I probably made two for every one that I wanted to make because you make mistakes. In addition to creating beautiful Judaica, objects of Jewish ritual items, Moshe also restores them including this unusual item found in every synagogue. So over here we have a uh, Torah crown. This sits, fits on the Torah scroll. When we open the ark in the synagogue on, on, uh, on Shabbat, and we start to move the Torah, the bells jingle. And when the bells drink, jingle, it's almost an announcement that people should stand up uh, uh, as they bring out the Torah. These items beautify the rituals. But Moshe doesn't just repair and create religious objects. He carries items of all kinds in his little shop, from kosher wines to jewelry and giftware. We took the earring. It was missing a mm -hmm. this small section, I think, from the middle. Yeah, so you made and a new one. We made a brand new one, all hand handmade. Isn't that wonderful? Lovely. Good. There aren't many of you left, right? Or you're the only one in Pittsburgh? Behind the counter is a tiny room where the master silversmith practices his craft. So welcome to my chamber of repairs. Um, here are some pieces that typically happens in almost every other home. Someone turns on the uh, dish disposer. And there you go, a mangled uh, flatware that ends up down in the disposer. Over here, if we move, we have a teapot with a lid that's uh, missing. So I'm going to attempt to uh, solder that hinge back on. Moshe Picar is a man of many talents. In addition to silversmithing, he's a professional musician. I play at weddings. Uh, I've been all over the world, actually. And uh, sometimes people uh, look at me and they see my uh, nails. They say, there's something else that you do. You're not just a uh, uh, keyboard player. So then I told them, well, actually, a silversmith, too. There are not a lot of people that do what I do. Silversmithing today, there's a very few, I would say, unique silversmiths out there that can really study and know and understand how to restore a piece and how to go about it.